Welcome to you. I'm Jeff. This is Paolo. And uh, glad to have Paolo sitting here by, at my side. Paolo is a numbers man. Paolo is actuary. Actually, an actuary. Paolo is actuary. Actually, an actuary. And uh, so he knows about these things. And whenever he speaks to me about facts and figures, I get confused, but on a much higher level. And uh, so, it's, so it's good to have Paolo here. We're here to give you a financial report. We do this on a routine basis. We aim it once every term. Uh, and we know that you want to know how the finances are and how we run the finances. We have a team of people that run the finances. I, I sit on the team, I'm not a part of the team. I sit as an observer and sometimes I give perspective, but I'm not a part of the team. Apollo is on the team and he acts as the, as, as the guider and, the, and, and, the, and the, the treasurer. Eddie Thompson represents the eldership. Uh, Eddie's also from the financial services arena and he is the chairman of, of the committee. There's Mark Alexander, uh, Professor Mark Alexander, who's on the team. Lynn Alexander is on the team as well. Trish acts as the bookkeeper. She works in the front office. And uh, who have I, who have I left out? Uh, Pilot Moyo, Professor Pilot Moyo, so many professors. He is also on the team representing the, the, the eldership. And we have had observers to learn how we do things as well, because we want to refresh the team. If you're interested, if you are really weird and you're interested in numbers and things like this, and you feel this is where you can add value to the life of the church, we're looking to refresh and expand the team. Speak to us because we'd like you to come, people such as you to come and observe how we do things, learn, learn the values because we are values driven and uh, see how we go about our business. Great, thank you, Pastor Jeff. So I'm going to dive into some of the detail. What we've seen is we've seen a progressive increase in tithes. And I like to always look back at, at, at sort of pre-COVID and post-COVID, and not because I like to talk about COVID, but because it represents a period where all of us were experiencing <clears throat> significant hardship. Yeah. And uh, back at the time, at the beginning of that, we as a, as a church decided, took the decision to revise our budget to be more conservative because we didn't know what the future held. And in response to that, what we saw is that the, the church pulled together and we saw a 10 or 11% increase in, in monthly giving on average. That continued throughout uh, 2020, 2021, we saw the average go up another 10%. And in the last five months, we've seen that go up another 9%. So. It tells a, for me, it tells a very remarkable story. I think it's something we need to celebrate and keep remembering. Um, and something we need to keep doing as well. It's, it's a large number of people that are supporting this growth. It's not just several or a few, it's, it's the many. And if we look at the, the combined giving, um, it tells a, another story because all these different initiatives have always been over and above uh, times. And so we just want to bring that into focus. Um, we've seen a, uh, a marked decline in Beyond These Walls giving over time uh, up to the point where running up to the end of June we've seen it roughly halve um, over the past seven or eight years. Um, if I may yes, just jump in there. <clears throat> During the COVID there was a shift in emphasis and so we went into something called hope bags. Before we used to have short-term mission trips and we had missions events, mission conferences and during the whole COVID lockdown thing, we changed gears and we did hope bags. We would take bags to the, to the widows in our wider community of churches and we helped. And so a lot of money went that way. What we are doing now is we in the process of rebuilding the momentum in Beyond These Walls and mission. So we've had a missions trip recently to the Transcar, which was a great success and we are planning other missions trips and we are responsible for missionaries and out there and so we need to rebuild the momentum and, and re-emphasize things that are that are happening there so the, it's true that we have had a, de a decline and we need to see that increase because hope bags is no longer a pressing need 
And so we are moving our emphasis back to beyond these walls. Beyond these walls refers to everything that happens outside of the church. Uh, the, the sound and the, the instruments and the decor and the functions and the speakers, that's all within these walls. We directly benefit. Beyond these walls is where people that we've never met before benefit. And they are important as well because they're depending on us and we need to be a voice and we've got to be a strong church. And we've said that the church, the income has gone up, uh, uh, the aggregate income has gone up over the last number of years. We're grateful for that. But we need it to go up more because we need to be a strong church. We need a strong from in order to have a strong to. If we're weak and we're just making the grade, we don't have seed to sow. We need to be a church with seed to sow in order to invest in those that are outside. And so we need everybody to be involved in this and to get in the game, to have skin in the game, to, to be committed and to show an interest in these things. And just to add to what you said, Jeff, um, so just based on the, the recent drive that you have propagated, the Beyond These Walls commitment uh, currently is sitting at uh, just over 20,000 Rand, which represents about a doubling of, the, of what's been coming into Beyond These Walls. But, but I want it to be 35, because our a average income is probably around 350, probably in, in the 10% of that. I'd like it to be going out so that there's money that we don't see and we don't benefit from. Uh, it's not our money, it's, it goes out there. So uh, that's, that is my goal. So people, if you're listening to us, get involved and give to Beyond These Walls. We take up an offering, tithes and offerings, and we take up a separate offering and run a separate bank account for Beyond These Walls. So you can get that on the website, you can see clearly the differences. Thanks, Jeff. So the last thing I want to touch on is the budget. Something which doesn't excite me, but something important to talk about. At the beginning of COVID, like I said, we, we, we pulled back a bit because of caution. Uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't make any rash, rash decisions or land up in a bad place. Mm. As a consequence, um, because the church remained so faithful and tithes kept increasing, yeah. um, the, the, we were able to build up a bit of a surplus. Mm. And the consequence of that surplus is that we've been in a position to make some very important and necessary once-off investments, yes. um, of which I'm, I'm sure you're going to speak about a lot um, in, in other places. Yes. We'll talk about, uh, I'll just say yes. drums and keyboards is a part of that. Um, and so part of this le led to the, the, the need to go back and re revise the budget, because I think as a finance team, we for several months discussed how we wanted to ensure that we were making use of all the funds coming into the church as actively and um, passionately as we could. Uh, we, we've run through a budgeting process. It was coordinated by the finance committee uh, and approved by the church leadership. And um, what what we've done is we've allocated a budget of 363,000 rand. So that is the, the amount of income that we are hoping will sustain over the year to come. And what, we, what, what we've uh, done, shown here is just a, a high-level breakdown of that budget to show how it's allocated into uh, what supports human resources and ministry, um, the strategic vision of the church being mainly departments. Um, there's, there's also a very significant component of operation expenditure, you know, city of Cape Town rates, water bill, electricity bills, and so on. Um, and, and then obviously a contribution to the AOG admin fund. So just want to show that we've gone through this process, um, it's been completed and we're now operating under that new revised budget. So we do not do things on an, on an ad hoc basis. We work on a budget system, things are organised strictly and directed um, in a conscientious manner and I'm so grateful to you and for the team. Numbers are not my game. I can add up a series of numbers and come to a title. Every time I add it, I get a different total. You don't want me in charge of the finances. Thank you for being at our side. Make us feel safe. You're welcome. It's a privilege. Thanks, Jeff.